Hi there, Pete here from Radio.co. Today's video, we're going to cover what you shouldn't be saying on radio in the US. So whilst the UK radio is covered by Ofcom, in the US, radio is covered by the FCC, the Federal Communication Commission. However, like Ofcom back in the UK, the SEC has some very strong and strict rules on things you shouldn't be saying, some of which we'll go through today. However, we definitely recommend you go into the SEC website and read in the full rules there so you are fully up on your rules before broadcasting. So here are some of the main things the SEC says you can or shouldn't be saying on the radio. So you can't say anything obscene. Obscene isn't one of the US First Amendments, so it can't be said on the radio. For something to be regarded as obscene, it has to meet three bits of criteria. It must appeal to an average person's interest, so that means an excessive, morbid or degrading interest in sexual matters. Depict or describe sexual contact in a potentially offensive way, or taken as a whole, lack serious, literary, artistic, political or scientific value. If something meets all of this criteria, you can't broadcast it. So unlike radio in the UK, the US does effectively have a watershed, and that is 10 p.m. till 6 a.m. In these times, you could get away with saying some things you shouldn't be saying in the daytimes. However, we would still advise caution and checking the guidelines for your local area. Outside of these hours, it's even more important to check on what you're saying and to check it meets the FCC guidelines. For example, you shouldn't be saying anything indecent or profane. The SEC defines indecent content as content which portrays sexual or excretory organs or activities in a way that is potentially offensive but does not meet the free prong test for obscenity. The SEC also defines profane content as content which is grossly offensive or language that is considered a public nuisance. So if you are wanting to play a hoax or a prank on someone using false information, you're actually breaking the SEC law and therefore you could find yourself getting a fine or worse, your license revoked. So it's really important you only broadcast content which you know is 100% legit. So also some things you can't send the radio in the US are things which could make you money or give you financial gain. So for example, if you had a night in the local club, you couldn't go on the radio and tell listeners to come and see you and pay to see you and therefore you make money. That isn't allowed under the FCC guidelines. You also have to abide by very strict guidelines when promoting things on air which are paid for. So if you have a product or an advert which has been paid to talk about, you need to follow some very strict guidelines when talking about it. Failure to follow these strict guidelines could cause you to get a fine from the FCC or worse, have you taken off the air. So one of the other many things you can't do on the radio when it involves money is talk about certain products in certain ways. So if you're paid to advertise a product, there are some very strict guidelines you have to follow, including making it obvious you're being paid to talk about that product. Failure to do this, as I'm sure you're going to guess, could result in you having a fine from the SEC or once again being taken off the air. And just to clarify, even if someone hasn't paid you directly to talk about a product, if someone has given you a gift which has a monetary value, of any value by the way, you still have to follow those guidelines. So if you have a gift which is $5, for example, you still have to follow the guidelines, the same as if you had a gift which was $5,000. These guidelines are very important and need to be followed. However, these rules don't mean people can give you gifts. There are just some very strong rules about how you talk about those gifts on air. One of the main important things to do is clarify this is a gift and someone has given it to you. Also the same as if you're being paid to talk about a product, you need to clarify that. So we would definitely recommend reading the SEC guidelines on gifts and paid promotions to make sure you don't fall foul of any of those rules. So another thing which is slightly different in the US than the UK is radio station names. In the UK, we have station names which a lot of presenters might change how they say it on the air. However, in the US, you have IDs. Let's say Z100 in New York, for example. These IDs are part of the station's legal entity and these have to be said exactly as they are. You can't change them, you can't change the letters. You have to pronounce these IDs exactly the way the station was given them. Also, whilst talking about IDs, the IDs have to be played as close to your top of hour as possible. For example, they have to be played be five minutes before the hour or five minutes after. This is once again an SEC requirement and something your station has to abide by. 
So if you're like me, you might have wondered before how some of these radio station IDs become to be. These IDs are made of your radio station's call letters followed by your license in city. So just to close off the chat about IDs, as we mentioned, IDs need to be pronounced on air exactly how they were given to you. You could add in your frequencies. So say your ID was ABC and you're on 88 AM. You could add your frequency in, but that's it. You can't change or move around your ID. It has to be read out on air as the SEC gave it to you. So that's it for today. I hope this video has given you a brief guideline of some of the things you can or shouldn't be saying on the radio in the US. However, we definitely recommend you read the SEC guidelines and are fully up on them before broadcasting on the air, just so you're not breaking any laws or rules in the US. But for now, that's it from me. Take care and happy broadcasting. And just before you go, how would you like to launch your very own online radio station? Surprisingly, it's a lot simpler than you may think. And the absolute best way to get started is by chatting to myself or another member of the Radio.co team. To do that, just head to radio.co forward slash demo to schedule a video call with us, where we'll discuss your plans, answer your questions, and of course, guide you around the Radio.co software.